Welcome to Game Devs Play Games. We play games and talk game design, and we are here with the beginner's guide made by Everything's Unlimited. Everything Unlimited. Everything Unlimited, excuse me. <laughs> I knew I was going to mess it up. All right, so uh, we don't know much about this game. No, but, with the, okay, so the reason we're playing this is because you guys voted for it. Yes, yay. you voted for it. Yay! See, your vote does matter. <laughs> <laughs> so remember that when you voted these other episodes? <laughs> Uh, Thank you for that, Joey. Uh, unlike the current election, your vote does matter. Oh, oh no. No. Uh, okay, let's jump uh, into this before this turns I'm into kidding. political mess. I'm kidding. You should vote. Please do. <laughs> or the world's going to be a chaos. So you're playing this one. I am playing this one, so let's see how bad I do. Well, uh, if the theory is that this isn't a skill-based <laughs> game. <laughs> we'll find out. I'll make it a skill-based game. Mm. All right, let's hop into it, guys. So everything unlimited made this game. Uh, they made the Stanley Parable. Are you are you hopping into? It? Are you having trouble? I'm just gonna hop into it. Oh, okay, I was like, I, it looked like you were pushing the button, no. and I was like, please make sure the audio's on. So it's gonna be quiet for us. So we have captions going. So we're gonna do our best to not make it too loud, so that you guys can get the best viewing. Yes, possible. Can't tell if there's someone speaking or not. I put captions on. Hi there. Oh, there Thank you very much for playing the beginner's guide. My name is Davy Reedon. I wrote the Stanley Parable, and while that game tells a pretty absurd story, today I'm going to tell you about a series of events that happened between 2008 and 2011. We're going to look at the games made by a friend of mine named Coda. Hmm. Now these games mean a lot to me. Uh, I met Coda in early 2009, at a time when I was really struggling with some personal stuff, and his work <laughs> pointed me in a very powerful direction. I found it to be a good reference point for the kinds of creative works that I wanted to make. So just to start you off, this is, I think, the first game he ever made. It's a level for Counter-Strike. You can <laughs> walk around here, by the way. And uh, Already mostly doing it's it. just Coda learning the basics of building a 3D environment. But what I like is that even though he starts from the simple aesthetic of a desert town, he then scatters these colorful abstract blobs and impossible floating crates around the level. And of course, it destroys the illusion that this actually is a desert town, and instead this level becomes a kind of calling card from its creator. It's like a reminder that this video game was constructed by a real person. And it kind of makes you wonder, what was going through his head as he was building this? This is what I like about all of Coda's games. I mean, not that they're all fascinating as games, but that they are all going to give us access to their creator. I want us to see past the games themselves. I want to get to know who this human being really is. Oh, and that's exactly what we're going to do. Climb. Oh, so do it's 2008. Coda starts making these games and he never releases any of them. He doesn't put them onto the internet. He just makes them and then immediately abandons them and they sit on his computer forever. And I think he really understood this image of himself as a recluse. Uh, at one point he jokingly renamed his computer's recycling bin to Important Games Folder. <laughs> so, you know, this was just how he worked. He tended to crank them out one after the other without even really pausing to try to understand what he had just made until suddenly one day he just stopped. In 2011, that was it. He made his last game, and then he hasn't made another one since. Mm. And that's why mm. I've taken this opportunity to gather all of his work together. Is because I find his games powerful and interesting, and I'd like this collection to reach him, to maybe encourage him to start creating again. That's cool. And if the people like you who play this also happen to find his work interesting, then I'm sure it'll just send that much stronger of a message of encouragement to Coda. So thanks for joining me on this. If you have a particular interpretation that I haven't mentioned here, or if you just need to get in touch, you can email me at d-a-v-e-y-w-r-e-d-e-n at gmail.com. Hmm. Wow. Okay, that's about it for introduction. Let's take a look at Coda's first proper game. As each game is loading, I'll show you the date that it was completed. This first one was made in November 2008. It's very personal. Okay, yeah, right? It's... I wonder, so, I don't know if this is, like, autobiographical, or I guess biographical, right, because it, he, the guy that he's talking about didn't necessarily, uh, he didn't make the, 
Like he made the game, but this he also didn't make the games Escape that from this is based yeah, on. Yeah, right. More generic games you'll see from Coda. Can't really do much about like an aim aim. I don't know if that's the point of this. Hmm. So it it I wonder though, right? Because yeah. it could be a biographical game, but it also could be that it's a story about a biographical game. Is, is right? Is that weird? Security call I I'm leaning on the side that it probably is biographical, just because. I guess why wouldn't it be? It right. No, no. It, like it feels like it, you know. Mid development. For instance, you have this gun, which you'd think would indicate that there are supposed to be monsters or enemies somewhere. But then yeah. clearly there are no enemies anywhere. You can't even reload the gun when you run out of oh, bullets. No, you cannot. I'm out of bullets. But ultimately, <laughs> we don't really know. Maybe Coda thought that actually it was complete the way that it is. And I think that we should talk about his games for what they are, rather than for what they're not. Interesting. Enemy force Oh, cool. Oh. I'm out of bullets. So hopefully there's no enemies, because I am... I love how you can see the bottom of the universe from this room. <laughs> oh. That's so cool. That is kind of cool. It kind of shows you how uh, a uh, skybox works, too. Yeah, right? For those who don't know, Chris, what is a skybox? Skybox is basically just, like, the the entire circle of, of images that surround, like, a playable, a playable area. area. So it, it sets the scene, right? So, like, you know, in movies they have, like, the backdrop. It makes it seem like they're, you know, in some kind of Apparently setting. The space station has basically a what Skybox okay. does. I, uh, this reminds me of, I like, know. James Bond. There's really <clears throat> no reason for it that I've ever been able to discern, so in the interest of time, I'm just going to skip you on past it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's funny, because he knows okay, that people are going to look the around. That's interesting. The game has this narrative about the whisper machine and how it has to be turned off, and then you get to the engine room. Hmm. Mm, I don't know if I want to go in there. Oh, here we go. Hey, you there, in the engine room. You could save us all. That beam is powering a whisper machine. We could disrupt it by introducing a great enough heat signature. Oh. If you... Your body could stop the beam. Oh. So much to ask, but for all of our lives, would you do it? Could you give yourself? Oh. Let me pause here for a second. What you just experienced, stepping into the beam and then dying, is probably what Coda had initially intended when he was developing this level. Okay. But when he first compiles and plays it, something goes wrong. There's a bug somewhere. And this is what happens instead. Whoa. What? What? Whoa. The beam causes you to start floating. It's pretty and this legit is an bug. Important yeah. for him. Because yes, this is technically a glitch, but Coda identifies something human about it. Like how small it makes you feel in the face of this larger chaotic system. Or this floating could be the afterlife, a peaceful place, juxtaposed against all of the hysteria that you've just had to traverse. I, I don't even know. Uh, I have no idea what he was thinking, but what's clear is that after making this, something lodges itself in his brain. He wants to do more of these really weird and experimental designs. Huh. So he stops work on this and moves on to a stream of tiny little games that go in all sorts of directions. Let's go ahead and take a look at the first game he made after leaving this one behind. Hmm. So it's still November. Well, we should probably pause here, huh? No, we still have about oh, three minutes. Oh, cool. Uh, Hester was behind her. It's fun, too, oh, because that yep. was literally okay. behind you. you. Can oh! Walk oh! Oh, that's kind of clever. So you have to, like, figure out... Can you fall down the ledges? I don't know. Uh, it doesn't... looks too narrow. So it's a short and relatively minimalist experiment combining motion and narrative. <laughs> it is less advanced than the previous game, but actually it seems to be more focused, more complete. Code is trying to give it a unique voice rather than simply basing it on a pre-existing trope. 
Oh. Hmm. There's, a, there's an entrance way there, I just have to... Aha! When she stops that and looks, looks it, it becomes, becomes her. Clear. Oh. Hmm. <clears throat> the future is always behind her. Weird. Oh, that's so... Oh. How will she find the strength? Oops, oops. What an in To confront it. And there's a short little thought. It says what it wants to say, and then it ends. Didn't need anything more than that. Interesting. Which to me is why it works. Because it gets out quick. Okay, next one. Hmm. This is all, if you notice, this is all in November of 2008. Yeah. How crazy is that? He just made all these games during that time. I mean, depending on the engine he's using, it might actually be easier than you'd realize. Uh, but I, I think this is probably a good a point to stop in. Yeah. Um, so, question of the day. This is interesting because we've never played an auto or a biographical or an autobiographical yeah, no, game in the show. So, far, yeah. um, so, I guess maybe the question is I guess, like, what are the best ways to do? Mm -hmm. That or yeah, well, how, what's the best way to present an autobiographical game? Mm -hmm. Right, biographical game. Because we're not deep enough in this to really know exactly how it works as a whole yet. Yeah, um, but no. we, we've gotten a taste, and that's definitely piqued my curiosity. Yeah, and, and it's interesting because it makes me want to learn more about this Coda person. Mm -hmm. hmm. And it makes me wonder why he stopped making games. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, hopefully, we'll, we'll explore that. Um, so, if you guys enjoyed this episode, though, please uh, give us a like comment on the question of the day and please vote for what see next whether it's more of this or uh, any other game um absolutely yeah it's crazy <laughs> right it's crazy um so without anything more than that uh, we'll see you guys in the next episode thanks for watching everyone see you guys